Congratulations, you made it to the end of week one of classes. And you've gotten over that, you know, that awkwardness of, all right, what's the first day going to be like? What's it going to be like when I first go into Spelman again? Or what's it going to be like sitting in front of the computer? Um, you've gone from, what's it going to be like to, all right, I see what it's going to be like. And now I can take my next good step forward. It won't be so bad uh, coming back next week. But I have to admit, I, I was here three days this week and I walked around and I, I saw some of you guys, which was great. And I saw some of the teachers and got to talk to them and catch up with them. But there was a certain, you know, sadness around school. You know, there wasn't that same energy that there normally is. And I think we're all trying to do our best with it. Administration, teachers, students, we're all trying to like do the best we can with it. But I was thinking of this, this sadness. You know, I went to the cafeteria and I didn't hear the roar, the the excitement, the hanging out, and the, the friendships growing. And I imagine that's going to be hard for the freshmen who don't know anybody yet. Or it's going to be hard for the seniors who imagine this is going to be our year. What do we do with that stuff? What do we do with that experience of it's not the way I thought it was going to be? What do we do with that? Can any good come from it? Well, as I was taking some time of prayer today on Friday, this image um, in our chapel, this new painting, this new mural that's been painted by uh, our wonderful artist, came to my mind and heart. And I thought, well, the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, it wasn't as they thought it was going to be. Maybe not as they would have wanted it to be. Jesus, the Son of God, chose to come into our world, and he didn't wait for it to all be perfect. He didn't wait for us to get it all together, but he came into a really broken, imperfect world with things not as perhaps we would have liked to. If we had written a story for how God would have come into the world, it probably would have been different. But he chose to come into a mess. This very image is the Holy Family coming back to Israel after their time as immigrants, as exiles in the land of Egypt. You can see the pyramids in the back. So Jesus has grown up a few years in a foreign land, and now him and his family are heading back to Israel, to Galilee, where Jesus will eventually start his ministry and then go to his passion, death, and resurrection. You can almost get a sense in this image. Jesus is like, all right, here we go. We're going. I'm on my mission. But why did they have to go to, to Egypt? Because the king, the political leader, was looking to destroy him, to kill him. And if you remember, he was born in a stable. His crib was where animals ate. Things were far from perfect for the Son of God. Often as Christians, we, we tend to think of Christianity wrongly. We think of it as, well, if I live a good life, then Jesus will reward me at the end of my life and let me go to heaven instead of going to hell. But that's not the gospel. That's not Christianity. Jesus says all throughout his ministry, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is here. It's within you. What is he talking about? Could we find the kingdom of God among us during this time of going back to school and it being weird and strange and not the way we would have wanted to? Yes. That's what it means to be authentically Christian. Is that as baptized people, we have the kingdom of God living within us. That if we can open up this suffering, this experience of suffering that we're going through right now, if we can open it up and share it with God, that we can receive all that we need to receive. That this can actually be part of our salvation, part of what makes us the men and women we're meant to be. If we can share, authentically share, Everything we are right now, the, the space that's been created by this suffering, if it can be filled by the love of God. If we can find that love of God being poured into our hearts, then we can pour it out for others. And this moment of our life, this crisis, this difficulty, can become a moment of fruitfulness. It can become an experience of the kingdom of God. So perhaps over these next weeks, as things are not as you would have them be if you had planned it that way, Think of Jesus. Think of the Holy Family. Our Lord came into a world that wasn't perfect, that was a mess, and he loved us there. And he wants to love us now in this place where we find ourselves. Congratulations on making it through the first week. 
Um, look forward to the next week. Share that time. Share the space in your heart with God, and it will be fruitful. God bless you.